Hey guys, it's your boy Mark back with another video. I'm here to give you my review of NJPW G1 Climax 29-2019 Day 17 review. And I am about to surprise you guys. As you guys know, I did watch Day 1 of the G1 in full. Um, watched every single match in full, and then for Day, for day 2, all the way to Day 16... I just watched highlights for those shows, but still put out reviews for them. I, uh, for day 17 of the G1 Climax, though, I, I actually watched the whole show again. Yeah, I watched the whole thing. Um, highlights, uh, I was going to do the highlights again. But, uh, not all the matches have highlights for YouTube, honestly. Like, the channels... That I that I usually watch the highlights from. Uh, one of them was called Middle Finger. That that was literally his channel name, Middle Finger. Um, and uh, he always posted highlights for every single match, along with other a couple other YouTubers. One other YouTuber um, forgot his name completely. Um, but um, you know they uh they must have gotten taken down those channels, and totally understandable why they uploaded so many. Highlights of wrestling matches from the G1, you know, so I found out I, I Looked online and I watched this entire show Just the five matches though the five G1 matches not all these matches Even if you won a match from one of these G1s you weren't gonna win um, The G1 overall only Okada Bushi was going to do that, you know um, But still you still want to end the G1 on a high note, you know on a good note um, and this was the final A block, uh, G1 day, and, um, I'm very happy I watched it in full, honestly. Now, I don't love a lot of these matches like a lot of other people do. People give the last two matches, like, five stars. I love those matches, but, and they are easily the two best G1 matches that I've seen in this whole tournament that I watched in full, okay? Um, the last two matches of this day. And yes, pleasant surprise, isn't it, that I actually, uh, watched the whole thing this time. Again. For the first time since day one. And, uh, it was nice to, to do it again, honestly. It really was. Um, so yeah. Opening match, G1 Climax 29A block match. Evil versus Lance Archer. Uh, this was a good match. Um, I don't really remember it, to be honest. I remember, uh, Lance Archer, you know, um, yeah, really dominant. Uh, being really dominant in this match, I remember the referee counting, and then he told him to shut up. That was funny. And, uh, it was nice seeing Evil in there, too. Um, it was a, just a fine match, okay? Uh, honestly, the only thing I really remember, honestly, is, uh, because it was so long ago that I watched this match earlier today. Um, this was tonight's show, by the way, of course. Uh, and, uh, Lance Archer won. Uh, with the, the claw thing that he does. And pinned him 1, 2, 3, so... The G1, although he doesn't win, he doesn't make it to the finals, the G1's over for him, okay? And, um, and uh, he ends on a positive note, at least, you know, so. So that's cool. Next up, we have uh, Sonata versus Bad Luck Farley. I enjoyed this a little bit more than the opener, actually. Um, you had Farley. It's a typical Farley mess. He's trying to cheat the whole time, and, um, and, um, I enjoyed it, honestly. I liked it when Sonata had Fale in the skull end. Even the referee was like, I don't think Sonata can get the skull in on Fale. But then Sonata actually did it. And then, the re and then the commentator, English commentator, of course, said, but he's going to try anyway. And that's good. You know, you never know until you try it, really. You know, um, and, uh, and, uh, what's his name? The guy, one of the guys that was with Fale took out the referee and then... Fale tapped out when the referee was out. Yep. And Sonata was like, wait, why isn't the bell ringing? And then, of course, because the bell, the, the referee was taken out. And then, then I think, uh, Chris, what's his name? Chris Owens or something like that? I, f I forgot his name. Chase Owens, yeah. Um, was trying to interfere in this match, trying to attack Sonata. He couldn't get a single hit over Sonata, so, which means he remained, which means Fale didn't get DQ'd in this match. And, um, Sonata, um, 
I don't really remember the rest of the match, but Fale rolled him up for a 1, 2, 3, and ends the G1 on a positive note. So, yeah. Cool. Um, happy for Fale. I'm going to be honest, I, I like Fale as a character more than I actually enjoy watching him wrestle, personally. But, um, yeah, you know, he, he, is, he does some cool, funny stuff in the in the ring, in the ring, you know, um, yeah. Next up with the, next up we have Kenta versus Zack Sabre Jr. Uh, I was very excited for this match, and, um, a lot, I see a lot of people give this, like, four and a half. I'm on the way opposite end of that. I really enjoy this match, but honestly, it was extremely slow, um, and not in a good way, in my opinion, uh, but, like, it got really good near the end, um, you had them, like, kicking out a whole bunch of stuff, trying to figure out new stuff to do, and, um, and, yeah, uh, and I love the way that this match opened up with them doing a whole bunch of technical wrestling holds, you know, and then they let go, I love it when they do that in matches, and they did it here at the start of this match, but the ending was, like, the real good thing about, the, the real best thing about this match to me, um, got really, got pretty intense, and Zack Sabre Jr. had the hold on Kenta, and then he was kicking his head at the same time, and Kenta just gave up. You know, he let Sabre Jr. win, and, uh, yeah. Um, so, yep. The, the G1 ends on a positive note for Zack Sabre Jr. Next up, we have, uh, Hiroshi Tanahashi vs. Will Ospreay. Again, I thought this, I, I love this match. It was, uh, this, the, from... The G1 matches that I actually watched in full throughout this whole tournament for 2019. Um, I watched this match all, all the way through. This is the best match up to this point that I watched all the way through from this G1. It was fantastic, but it had a lot of slow moments, okay? Honestly, the last, like, the final part of this match, to me, were absolutely phenomenal and made the match to me. I, I love Hiroshi Tanahashi. I love Will Ospreay. But I was, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a bigger fan of Will Ospreay personally, and um, and um, a lot of people give this in the main event five stars. But it's, it might be because I already know who won, um, who won these matches that uh, I um, that uh, I don't, I don't like love them as much that much. But this match was dope. You had uh, Will Ospreay doing the spinny kick thing to Tanahashi. And then he did a freaking uh, uh, Tope Suicida, I think. Spaceman Plancha, I think, to Hiroshi Tanahashi on, to the outside. That was dope. And uh, you had him do the Os Cutter. And then um, I think Tanahashi... Oh yeah, Tanahashi countered it into a little bit of a sling blade when Will Ospreay attempted the Os Cutter the first time. That was incredible. Um... And, um, and then Will Ospreay later did the Oscar cutter again, and he landed at that time. And then, um, he, and then, um, they fought some more, and then Will Ospreay did the Stormbreaker for the 1, 2, 3, defeats Hiroshi Tanahashi, which is awesome. I'm a huge fan of Tanahashi, but even bigger fan of Will Ospreay personally, um. So yeah, it, it didn't come anywhere close to winning the G1, but yeah, it's all, this will, after that, it's all about just ending on a positive note. I, I know I've, I've said that a hundred times in this review, I know, and I'm sorry, um, broken record, I know, but, um, yeah. But I'm happy for Will Ospreay, um, this was a, this was a fantastic match, um, and yeah. Now we're going to the main event. The match that determined who won the whole A block for the G1. Kazuchika Okada versus Kota Ibushi. Um, this match was absolutely phenomenal. I think it's the fact that I knew that Kota Ibushi won this match that uh, I didn't like love it like five stars like a lot of people were saying. But this match was absolutely phenomenal. It was awesome. I think it's slightly better than um, Tanahashi Osprey, uh, mostly because I thought it was a much better pace, in my opinion. But um, Okada and Ibushi, um, this match was fantastic. Um, it was, um, it was, a uh, you had Okada doing his usual stuff, a lot of awesome moves. Okada did the DDT to Ibushi on the outside, 
and Ibushi got back in the ring. Um, Okada, um, it was just a great match to watch, honestly. Okada, there was this one spot when Okada tried to do the drop kick that he does to Kota Ibushi, and Kota Ibushi freaking countered it into a power bomb. That was dope. And, um, and, um, I don't think Okada managed to hit the Rainmaker once in this match. Um, but, um, uh, this match was definitely all about Ibushi, not just because he won, but because it was like he was the focus in a way it seemed of this match, like the way the cameras were onto him and stuff. Um, and I, I love, yeah, let's just get straight to the ending. Um, <laughs> Ibushi did his finisher, uh, Okada kicks out, then straight away does his finisher again for the 1, 2, 3. Kota Ibushi wins the A block of the G1 tournament. Yes! That was awesome. Um, I, I, was st I was still, I think I probably would have preferred Okada winning. Um, but uh, Ibushi winning, you know, it, it was an underdog t thing. That's kind of what I made of it. And that in itself was awesome. So I'm absolutely happy for Okada Ibushi. He's not who I want to win the G1, though. The, there's a certain guy in the, in the B block who I really hope wins the G1. But I don't think he actually will. Um... But, uh, I'm, yeah, I'm thinking I'm gonna watch Day 18 all the way through as well, honestly, guys. Um, it's, it's much later tonight. It's about, wow, wow, really? Only three hours from now it starts. Um, from when I'm doing this, uh, review, of course, um, and, uh, yes, NXT TakeOver Toronto was tonight. I'm, I'm gonna post my review of that very soon, guys. I think for that, because, I think I might just watch the highlights for that one, though, honestly, um, a 43-minute highlight video, by the way, of the entire show, so, um, because I really want to get that up on the day that it happened, you know, I don't want it to be technically the next day, like, past midnight in the US or whatever, where it won't say that I uploaded it on the on the day of, if that makes sense, I want, I want that review up on the day of, okay? I heard that Adam Cole versus Johnny Gargano was phenomenal. Um, I have no doubt about that. Everyone's praising that match like crazy. And, uh, yeah, so stay tuned for that. Tonight, I got a busy day today, man. It's sad. I think dinner's ready, but I think I just want to work for a little bit more. Um... You guys enjoyed my review of day 17 of the G1 Climax 2019, ladies and gentlemen. And, uh, yeah, just two more days left after this, and I plan on watching them in full for real. Catch you later, guys. Peace out.